So you can tell that the High Line is still under construction as witnessed by this. And you can also tell that the High Line is a tourist distraction as as we're filming this, people are actually worried about getting in the way of the shot. If you were a true New Yorker, you'd just bust on through and nobody would care. So one of the buttons that this camera doesn't have on the top is a dial for the drive mode. If you want to change the drive, you press the button on the back here and you use the directional buttons to choose from your still image, your burst mode, to your bracket mode. It also has a multiple exposure mode, which seems kind of cool in theory, but you're gonna probably be post-processing your pictures anyway, so it doesn't seem to me to make a ton of sense to kind of lock in your multiple exposures when you take the picture. The other thing it does is a sweep panorama, which you actually have to do live. You start, it's like 120 degrees, I believe. You start and you sweep across as you take your panorama. You can set it to 180 degrees. It pretty much locks you into having to go the full 120. So if you wanted to do just a panorama of, say, this view here, which is maybe closer to 90 degrees, it wouldn't allow you to do that. You'd have to start further over and go all the way across. The bracket mode in this camera is different from what I'm used to. When I take a bracket on my Panasonic, I press down the shutter button and it takes three pictures in succession. If I don't hold the button for long enough, it stops taking pictures after the first or second. This one actually, you press the shutter button once and it takes all three pictures in a row. You don't have to hold the button down. And then after it's done, it actually shows you all three pictures on the screen at the same time. I think that's actually kind of a nice feature. It makes it so that you don't accidentally take fewer pictures than you were expecting. And it also gives you the option of sort of reviewing the exposure level. So if you decide you want to take a smaller bracket, say a third of a stop as opposed to a full stop, you can easily check the back and you'll know right away if that's something you want to do. It gives you the option of taking one stop bracket, two thirds of a stop, or one third of a stop. And it'll only take three pictures in a bracket. So you're pretty much limited to a three stop bracket, which isn't terrible, but it'd be nice to have the option of going a little bit higher, maybe two stops, or maybe taking five pictures instead of three. So if you've watched any of our videos, you know I'm a stickler for auto ISO control. And the reason is because I like to be able to go out and shoot and leave some of the settings up to the camera, especially with street photography or travel photography, when maybe I'm going from outside to inside or day to night, I don't always want to be thinking about all those settings. I tend to want to shoot in aperture priority and let the camera handle the rest by letting my shutter speed be figured out by the camera and the ISO be figured out by the camera. With one caveat of I want to be able to set a minimum shutter speed so I could freeze my subject. Well, the Fuji gets it half right. They do something really great, which is they have three presets for auto ISO. So you can save three situational presets of parameters. So maybe you want one to go from ISO 200 to 6400 and another one that only goes up to 3200. And each one can have a minimum shutter speed setting. And that's great. My biggest gripe, and this would be such an easy fix for them, is that the minimum shutter speed caps out at 1 1 25th of a second. You can't set it any faster. And so if you want to freeze your subject, and your subject is moving and you're moving, and you want to set it to maybe 1 2 50th of a second, you can't do it. So you wind up shooting in manual. And then that can wind up biting you because I want my minimum shutter speed to stay at 2 50th and then float up from there. But I can't do it with this camera, so I wind up shooting in manual more than I want to. And I just wish with a simple firmware upgrade, they gave me the control over that minimum shutter speed to use a higher number. So if you know anything about me at all, you know that I'm a big autofocus fan, an unabashed autofocus fan even. Me too, yeah. And I think that the autofocus on this camera is actually pretty quick. It's probably not as quick as the Sony A7 II that we had a couple of weeks ago, but I actually had my hands on an X-T1 not that long ago, and the autofocus on this is markedly faster than that. Definitely that camera spent faster. A, yeah, it spent a lot of time sort of hunting and pecking for the focus, where to go in and out. This camera isn't quite as fast as perhaps you may dream it could be, but it doesn't really spend too much time looking for focus. Once it finds it, it locks onto it, 
and it's pretty pretty accurate. I felt it, it got the focus probably around, and then and I'm talking in a street photography, really fast moving scenario, probably around 75, 80% of the time and, and pretty quickly. I was also shooting at f2 or 2.8, so there wasn't a lot of room for error. So it was pretty good in terms of, right. of that because I, I wasn't shooting at a closed down aperture where I could have that margin of error, you know? Right, and the other nice thing for street photography, because the main, main reason why you'd probably want to buy this is because of street photography. It has face detection, and it seems to be pretty accurate. I think you said there were some um, missed faces. Uh, yeah, I've, I got a few brick walls that were faces. Yeah, a couple of false <laughs> positives, perhaps. But for the most part, it, it got faces almost all the time. Whether or not I was able to lock in on them as fast as I needed it to, that was another story. Most of the time it did, but there were a few instances where it detected the face, but even still it wasn't sharp. And then a few instances where it detected a wall as a face. Yeah. Again, for the most part, it was pretty good. Now we should also talk about manual focus, because if you look on the side of the camera here, there's this little knob that lets you quickly shift into manual focus mode. And once you do, you have a few interesting options. Now, of course, you have the focus ring on the front of the lens here to focus. It's a little small, so if you have fat fingers, it could be a little hard. I don't really have a problem. No, and I actually think it's not really that the, the ring itself is all that small. It's just that the aperture has yeah. a bit of a handle here, and the handle kind of sometimes gets, gets in the in way. a little. So again, if, it's a, if you have fat fingers, you may have a little bit of a problem, but I think in general, it's kind of a nitpicky. Yeah, so once you go into manual focus, there are a few options. Um, there's the standard mode um, that you can choose, and, and you can choose all these by going into the menus and going to your manual focus settings. Um, the standard mode, which where once you start focusing, it'll just zoom in on your screen. There's another option where you can do that, but additionally you can have focus peaking. So that'll give you kind of the blinky red or green, uh, and you can choose you can the color. You can choose your color, and yeah. you can choose if you want it to be high or low, so right. it's subtle or in your face. So those, you can have that in addition to the zoom in. Or the third option, which is the really kind of interesting one, which is the split image. And it's a digital split image, and if you've ever used a camera from probably the 70s or 80s, um, that had a split image focusing system, you know, the way that it works is the image will look kind of like it's bands. bands right, bands. And once you focus it correctly, the bands will join together and everything will look proper. And that's the same way this works. I can't decide if I think this is a gimmick or if I think that I would use it. It does work. Um, I think I prefer just the zoom in and, and the focus peaking. Right. But, but but it's a cool option, and I like that yeah. they put it in there. Well, I also think that, again, it goes back to the whole idea of this being a throwback camera and a retro camera. I mean, there are people who have been shooting for 30 or 40 years who used that feature probably for decades. Yeah. And I bet are thrilled that it's available in a camera. Because if it's something that you are used to already, it's really nice to have the option of doing it. For people who have started really seriously shooting in the digital age, it may not be perhaps as useful, but again, it's a feature that's it works really well and it's yeah. very cool. It's kind of nice to have. No, it's, it's, it's definitely a nice extra option in there that I enjoyed.